Mary Pickford. Yep, that's the DeLorean, all right. Real friendly place. Okay, well, let's see if we can go and talk to her. Go to her front door over there. Whoops. for intruding, madam. We were wondering if you could tell us... I don't talk to hooligans! Not a very friendly sort. That... that was Edna. Edna Strickland? Impossible. This is how she was when I first met her. I had to... Listen, just leave it to me. Okay, you think you know how to handle her. Just remember, we need to know what happened to Hill Valley, and just as importantly, the precise time when it happened. Okay. We've got another challenge here out of us, and that is to try to get Edna to talk somehow. But how are we going to do that? Hey, Mr. Who are you? Harry Callahan. That's a foolish name, and I make it a rule not to talk to strangers with foolish names. Well, that's We're foolish. We're not strangers. How do I know you? You interviewed me once. You interviewed me once, back when you were young. Listen, Sonny, I'm an easygoing woman, but I got a few rules I live by. And rule number one is, I never, ever talk about the past! Whoa. Or the future, neither. I don't talk about any day but today. I no. guess that didn't go so well. Of course she doesn't talk about the past. Because there's something in her past she's trying to forget. But we're gonna pry it out of her. Go ahead, knock on the door again. Alright. No day but today, huh? Well, let's talk about today. Because a lot happened today. What? It's me again, your old friend. How do I know you? We spent today together. We spent the day together. We did? Where? At the expo. That's crazy. I've been here all... What day is it? Tuesday, October 13th, 1931. October 13th, 1931. October 13th. Something funny about that date. Well, what are you here for? I brought something for you. I brought something for you. What is it? Let me see! Okay, what are we gonna show her here? Well, we've only got the picture of our father, which means nothing. The tickets, which aren't really gonna do anything. We got this, maybe we can try giving her the recording device. I brought you this! I ain't interested in flowers! When are you here? And I especially ain't interested in talking flowers. Put them away! Well, that's not gonna work. What about Doc, though? I brought you... him. Him? Who oh, him? Him who? It's Carl Sagan. You remember him, right? Sure you remember him. Carl Sagan. Uh, the guy you framed as the speakeasy arsonist. Speakeasy? Arson? That's complete gibberish, Sonny. Whatever you're talking about's got nothing to do with me. I never involve myself in such criminal shenanigans. Still, his features remind me of someone. It's Emmett Brown. Look hard. Don't tell me you don't recognize your own boyfriend. My boyfriend? <laughs> this yeah, is really awkward um, for Doc. He's all grown up. Come closer, fella. Marty, what am I supposed to do? Trust me, Doc. Just go with it. It can't be! Emmett! Yes, Edna. It's me. 
Looks like we triggered something. It's October 13th, 1931. Oh, and you are Emmett. Emmett. Oh, how did I get so turned around? Have I been dreaming or... Well, stay there. It's a classic case of repressed memory syndrome. Once the mental dam is broken, the subject is immediately plunged into the midst of the very scenes she's trying to forget. Maybe that might help us. Darling, you've come back. Of course I knew you would. An intelligent boy like you wouldn't be one to throw away true love all because of a silly quarrel. I've already forgotten about last night's little tip. I trust you've done the same? Of course I have. Of course I have. What? Uh, uh, uh. Well, he called her Schnookums earlier. Let's use that. Schnookums. Schnookums. <laughs> you're sweet. But you're still keeping company with this Smirnoff character. I insist you drop him. He's a bad influence. And you've got to stop working on that dangerous electrokinetic what's this? Um, okay. I suppose now you're miffed with me for forcing Detective Parker to close your booth down. Bitter medicine for you, I know, but I had to do it. And Parker had no choice but to obey my orders. He knows that my opinion carries a lot of weight in Hill Valley, and he'd never... Parker would never... Oh! Uh-oh. What is it? I don't know. Something about Detective Parker. Something that happened to me on October 13th. What could it be? Can you jog her memory? If we can keep her mind in the past, we may get the full story of Hill Valley's premature destruction. Exactly. That's what we need. But when we do have something uh, related to Officer Parker, we've got this plant here. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. No! Turn it off, you imbecile! If Parker hears that, he'll... Officer, I can explain. It was a trick. I was framed. Oh, he's after me! Ha! He'll never catch me in this souped-up car of the future. Curses! I can't shake him. Well, no use in holding back now. Let's see what this baby can do. And here it comes. Yes? Here what comes? I, uh, I, I don't know. Something really unexpected is supposed to happen right about now, but I'm not sure what. Oh, come to think of it, how can I be expecting something unexpected? Uh, oh, what's going on? Quick, Marty. We've got to find a way to push the story along before she snaps out of her reverie. Okay, well when the DeLorean speeds up to 88 miles an hour, it's usually accompanied by a bunch of flashing lights and stuff. So, let's see if we can trigger all the clanging and flashing of these things here again. Here they come! The lights! I'm being transported! Where? To the past! What do you see? Hill Valley! But it's all different. It's so small and primitive. Heavens! Can it be? It is! Is what? Grandfather! Big as life! Marshal James Strickland came to Hill Valley in 1869, shot by- I know, Doc. We met him in 1885. Remember? <laughs> no! I must be mistaken. Grandfather didn't look like that. That man is an imposter. I'm 
not even sure it is a man. This is all very confusing. Where am I? Why am I thinking about the past? Get off my lawn, you kids! Better find a way to bring back Marshal Strickland quick. We've got to bring this story to a climax. Indeed. So he's, uh, she said that this cactus here doesn't look like Marshal Strickland. Well, obviously it doesn't. But we need to make it look more like him in order to move the story along. Edna's grandfather, Marshal Strickland. That's the same picture I saw in Edna's apartment way back in the future. Okay, so Marshal Strickland has a hat and a mustache. Let's see here. Well, Edna has a hat over here. This hat doesn't frame her face very well. So let's put that on over here. Nice fit. Looks like a Strickland to me. Like my little brother, perhaps, but not like my grandfather. Grandfather was much more uh, shaggy. Yeah, we need to find something that will make him look like he has a beard or a mustache or some kind of facial hair at least. This might help. Let's see, we got some sort of uh, mop here. I'm guessing this mop doesn't get much use. Perfect. That should work. That looks shaggy, right? Let's try using that. This part of the game took me a while to figure out, mainly because of the hat. I didn't realize that Edna's hat was sitting over there, because I missed her putting it down in the cutscene earlier. There we go. Oh, Grandfather, how well you look. How well everything looks. How does everything look? Tell me. It's a bit rustic to be sure, but all the buildings are so sturdy and well kept, and the young people of Hill Valley, they're so virtuous and upright. So unlike the degenerate specimens from the 20th century, and I know the reason why. Why? They haven't yet fallen prey to the vices of booze and debauchery. They are still in a state of innocence. I think I could learn to like living here. <gasps> but who's this? Who? Oh, this big lout swaggering up the street. Lips curled in an insolent sneer. He's a newcomer to Hill Valley. Uh, Beauregard. Beauregard... <laughs> I like how Tannen is the only option. Tannen, yes! Good guess. <laughs> Look at Acting like a big shot. Throwing his money around. Stolen money, no doubt. Why can't they see through him? The two-bit phony! And now his plan becomes clear. He's bought a plot of land in town. He's going to put up a... Uh... A uh, uh, what? I don't know. It's something I don't like. Something evil. Evil. This is the key to our mystery. We've got to get her memory back in the groove. Well, what kind of place does Edna not like? She didn't like the speakeasy, so maybe the equivalent would have been a saloon back in the day. And there's a saloon sign right here. An old saloon sign. So maybe if we hang that on the outhouse... Too bad it's all burnt. Let's see what happens. Talk about a watering hole. A saloon? In Hill Valley? Oh, he can't do that! Grandpa, you can't let him do it! You can't let that snake ruin paradise! Well, if they're all too blind to stop him, I'll just have to take the law into my own hands. I'll make sure this sinful establishment never opens its doors. I'll... I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. Something very... conclusive. Something very conclusive, huh? Well, we know what she did in 1931 with the speakeasy. I wonder what's cooking. Maybe we can do the same. This 
part of the game also confused me because you can't really walk anywhere else with this thing. No, you're doing it all wrong. It'll never burn like that. First, we'll need some kerosene. Apply it liberally to the building site. No sense in being parsimonious. And now, watch. Beautiful! The devil's handiwork consumed by the fires of righteousness! <laughs> burn, you sucker! Burn! Oh my goodness. Some of this passion when we were dating. Oh. What is in that mood? Is it the fire? Turn away! Don't look! It's not staying in the saloon, is it? It's spreading. The other buildings in Hill Valley. Yeah. My intentions were pure. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. But it did happen like this. And you've been repressing him all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're... A hooligan. I'm a hooligan. <laughs> <laughs> she finally admits it. Did I lay it on too thick? Here's the story. Black and white and red all over. Huh. Hill Valley destroyed my fire. Started approximately 2 a.m. July 17th, 1876. Of course, I'm not the real criminal in this story. Am I, Mr. Sagan? Oh, no. You set me up for a fall. You and Schmernoff. You made me steal your infernal car. You made me burn down Hill Valley. And now, by the powers invested in me by the town of Hill Valley, I hereby sentence you two criminals to... Hey. You! How much have you heard? <laughs> Enough for a month's worth of headlines in a Hayesville Herald. Two months worth if you shoot those fellas. I could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law, right? This is your cue to skedaddle. Right. Much obliged. Whew, that was close. So, 1876. Farthest back in time we've been. There's Beauregard Tannen's half-finished saloon. Sometime during the next hour, Edna's going to light it on fire and accidentally burn down Hill Valley. I wonder where her DeLorean is. We'll find it later. Right now, we've got to stop that fire. I'll go around back. You go through the front. Got it. Okay. Well, we will deal with the saloon and Edna in the next video.